Tonight on KGW News, families come face to face with the man accused of killing three women. This is a living nightmare yeah. to go through this. Plus, a pride flag in Newburgh becomes a shooting target. It should not and must not be taken to reflect the way this community is. Then, Portland's leaders promote a jam-packed summer. Why they're optimistic as they juggle challenges that persist. What turns people's perception is when they come to the city and see it with their own two eyes. And later, the new exhibit that'll transport you across the globe. No, you don't need an artist or degree, but you just bring your eyes because that's what the artists are expecting you to bring. First at 11, burglars leave behind a shell of a business after they add arson to their list of crimes. While on their way out, the spree could mean months of rebuilding for a Vancouver bar and grill. And in the meantime, 20 people are now out of work. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Mulko. Alma McCarty spoke with the owner who says he is eager to catch the criminals. Inside an unassuming Vancouver business park. You pick a place like this on a Sunday during football, it's wall-to-wall -wall people. Charlie's Sports Bar and Grill. Wing Wednesdays, this place is packed. But since early Monday morning, it's been empty and quiet, but for worrying of dryers and fans. They've been working on that for days to get all the water out. Water that filled Dan Finley's restaurant. It was vacant for about a year, year and a half, and my wife and I decided to open up a bar, and it was the one that we met at. That was 33 years ago. Cut to this week. My wife and I were in Tennessee celebrating our 32nd uh, wedding anniversary, and I get a call at, you know, 4 o'clock in the morning from the alarm company telling me that there's a motion detector going off. He says criminals spent only a minute or so inside after breaking down the door and beelining for the register. And I think probably when they panicked when the alarm was so loud, they dumped their gas through here. They, they came along here because it burned. They must have dumped some gas or something along here because it burned all underneath the bar and inside of the bar all the way down to here. Sprinklers activated keeping the flames at bay until police and firefighters entered the building. Dan received video of the aftermath and got on the first flight back. You know, the, the fire damage was pretty contained, but man, the smoke and the water, it's bad. What's worse, Dan says his 20 employees here now out of work. It could be up to five months. Uh, we hope it's not going to be that long, but possibly. The work to repair, to replace, and to reopen begins next week. Dan says he's hopeful. And I'm looking for exactly what I had. You know what I mean? It's If they have to tear down all the sheetrock, all this stuff is custom done. You know, it took us, like I said, it took us 11 years to get to this point of making changes and making things better and adding bigger TVs. And, you know, just over time, as you get a little more money, you can put some more money into it. And, you know, it, so we just wanted to be back where it was. Dan's offering a $5,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of those responsible. He also plans to start a fundraiser for his employees to help keep them going while repairs are underway. David? Yeah, let's hope it is not five months. Thank you, Alma. In an update tonight, some family members of three women murdered in the Portland area came face to face with their alleged killer in court. Jesse Calhoun pleaded not guilty this morning in Multnomah County Court to charges of murder and abuse of a corpse. He is accused of killing Joanna Speaks, Charity Perry and Bridget Webster. Their bodies were found in secluded areas around Portland last winter and spring. Melissa Smith, who was there to support their families, also has questions about what happened to her daughter, Kristen. It's killing us families. This is a living nightmare yeah. to go through this. Nobody should ever have to go through this. And we just want justice. Calhoun spent the last year in prison in Eastern Oregon on an unrelated parole warrant. He is scheduled to be back in court next month. To get you caught up on tonight's other headlines now, Portland police have identified the Uber driver who was killed in an on-the-job shooting Tuesday night. They say 42-year-old Joshua Kelvin from Almsville was shot and killed in the Powhurst Gilbert neighborhood while driving a passenger just before midnight. That 17-year-old passenger was critically injured. No word on any suspects or arrests.
Staying in Portland, police are looking for a person they say shot and damaged city property at least seven times over the last two weeks, causing hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage. This video from May 27th shows the suspect abruptly pulling over, getting out, and then firing a handgun three times. Based on the video, it appears the shooter was targeting a red light camera at Southeast Washington and 103rd, one that still has multiple bullet holes. Authorities say the suspect's car is a dark colored Subaru WRX with no license plates, a hood scoop and a low pro profile spoiler. Call Portland Police if you recognize the car or the driver. And as Pride Month gets underway, police in Newburgh are investigating a possible bias crime. Public library officials say someone fired what appears to be a BB gun at a Pride flag hanging in one of their windows, and it happened while the building was open. Newburgh's mayor encouraged the library not to be intimidated and to put up even more Pride flags in response. We do our best to not make sure that things like this can never happen. It should not and must not be taken to reflect the way this community is. Police are now reviewing security video from the library and other businesses with the hope it will lead them to the shooter. Well, tonight, a health alert on the coast continues to grow. Oregon has now closed shellfish harvesting along all 362 miles of coastline. This comes one day after Washington did the same. Oregon agriculture officials say a marine biotoxin is now affecting razor clams, bay clams and mussels again along the entire coast. The toxin has made at least 20 people sick with paralytic shellfish poisoning. Crab harvesting remains open, but officials caution you should gut crabs before cooking them to be safe. All right, so shellfish are out, sunshine is in. You're taking a live look at nothing but clear skies from our Rose City Sky Camera. And if you like the weather today, you're going to love it tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino is here. Matt, sounds like near perfect conditions for just about anything outdoors. For about the next week, as a matter <laughs> of fact. It really is a great stretch of weather. We usually do this and say, July, not so much in early June, but hey, we'll take it right outside right now. It is 67 in Portland with a clear sky. The wind's still up a bit, 13 miles an hour. Nice little breeze out there tonight. Helped keep things cool, right? We made it up to 82 today in Portland. That is our seventh 80 degree day of the year. We've had two 90s. That was back in May, the 10th and the 11th. Those are our warmest days of the year. But again, today was our seventh 80 degree day. You know how many we had by this time last year? 17. And back in 2016, we had a record 20 80 degree days through the 6th of June. So we're doing, you know, we're rolling a lot closer to normal or average here, a lot cooler than last year so far. Average date of our first 90 degree day, we've already had a couple, but that usually doesn't happen until late June, although that date is getting earlier and earlier as the climate changes. So that's what we've been dealing with. Here's what we're going to be dealing with going forward. Clear, cool nights, sunny, warm days, really beautiful conditions. Slight cool down for the weekend, which is just about perfect for the Grand Floral Parade because it'll still be clear. It'll still be warm, about 68 at the start of the parade, 73 at the finish, and we'll have the rest of the weekend forecast in a bit. David, back to you. Slight cool down sounds just fine. Thank you, Matt. All right, with the culmination of the Rose Festival comes a jam-packed summer calendar for downtown. Everything from the Waterfront Blues Festival to Portland Pride in July. Leaders acknowledge the reality that homelessness, drug use, and crime have kept people out of the neighborhood. Though they say data shows downtown is much safer than years past. Mayor Ted Wheeler says he hopes visitors notice and then spread the word. What turns people's perception is when they come to the city and see it with their own two eyes that the programs, that the investments we've made have shown good progress. Portland police data shows citywide car thefts, robberies and shootings are down compared to this time last year. To a bit of an ironic example in our homeless crisis and one that shows why potential solutions aren't always simple. Let's explain here. A private developer has been ready for the past two years to build affordable housing in South Portland near South Corbett Avenue and Wood Street. But they say they cannot move forward because of a large and some say problematic homeless camp that keeps coming back despite the city's efforts to remove it. The developer says they will not build until the city comes up with a long term solution. According to the mayor's office, records show city teams have checked on the site seven times in just the past two weeks and removed it twice. Um, if we can't guarantee that safe and secure environment, we can't build. What if we build it and they come back and we can't even rent it? <laughs> I mean, you got it. You have to work. The private sector and public sector have to work together to rebuild Portland. 
I don't understand. How would us being here stop them? From, I mean, when construction starts, when they show up and everything, I mean, yeah, we can leave then. You know what I mean? When we're in the way. But right now, I do not understand how us being here could possibly stop the construction from going on. The city's outreach team referred eight people to shelter today. The developer says he's hoping a change at who's in charge at City Hall this November will result in a change on the streets. New tonight, the Oregon State Hospital in Salem is under a new threat of losing federal funding. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services announced it has placed the hospital in what is called immediate jeopardy status. Surveyors reported the hospital wasn't properly completing hourly check-ins on patients. The hospital will have to submit a plan to fix the issues or risk losing Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement. Also new at 11, Multnomah County Commissioners have approved a nearly $4 billion budget for next year. Among the highlights here, nearly $27 million to support a brand new 24-7 drop-off sobering center. Also more than three quarters of a million to the district attorney's office to prosecute more drug and gun crimes. More than 900,000 will go to the sheriff's office, plus an additional 1 million toward helping the county meet its goal of adding at least 1,000 new shelter beds. Straight ahead at 11 on this Thursday, sensors on the ground and eyes in the sky. How the Northwest early earthquake warning system is now getting an upgrade. Plus, how you can enjoy masterpieces created halfway around the world without leaving the Rose City.